what can luxury brands teach us about inflation? That's the topic for today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rising Best. For those who are tuning in for the first time, this is your channel for financial education. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different than the ones that we usually create. And what we're going to do is to talk about luxury brands luxury brands that's really quite out there yes i know but believe it or not luxury brands have a lot to teach us about market fluctuations and if we learn about those market fluctuations through the analysis of those brands then we can actually take those concepts and take that learning and apply that to a real estate investment or any type of investment out there that we're looking to do in the future so without further ado let's go straight into my computer and show you what i prepared for you today and here we are in my computer Computer. I'm actually very excited for this class because it's very different than the content that I normally create. So before we dive in further into what I have prepared for you today, let's just go back and level up the playing field, okay? Because I want to make sure that everybody um, that is joining to today's video understands where I'm coming from. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I actually released an episode where I talked about why you should buy a house now, right? And August uh, 2021, there's been a lot of noise and uh, as to this being a bad time to invest in real estate, yada, yada. And in this video in particular, I actually share a presentation and this presentation is here. And what I want to do is to take your focus into this one slide in particular, which is uh, the slide where I talked about inflation. Now, in that video, I actually talked about multiple scenarios that could create inflation. But in this video in particular, I want you to focus on this one. And that is when the value of the product that you want to purchase is going up and you have to pay more. So an example of this is, let's say you have to pay $6 in 2020 to buy five tomatoes and then in 2021 the same five tomatoes are costing you nine dollars and then god knows what it's going to cost you in 2022 however in spite of the price increases people can still afford it regardless of your socioeconomical situation whether you're low income middle class or even if you're rich right and this is caused because of the government uh, printing of money and um, how they actually inject money into the economy so back in 2008 it happened through quantitative easing and then in 2020 it happened with the stimulus checks right so the printing of money uh, creates inflation uh, because there's more money circulating the economy and because there's more money circulating in the economy, people have uh, the tendency to believe, unless you're educated on the subject, but uh, for those who are not ed educated, uh, people tend to believe that they have more money because the government is giving you that money. However, because of inflation, your money is not worth anything. What you wind up with is something that is called a nominal number, meaning that it looks good on paper. It looks like you actually have money on paper. However, when you go out to the store and you buy something, you can't exactly buy more. You wind up either buying the same stuff or uh, sometimes even less, depending on uh, where you're located. Uh, great examples of that happened uh, in Zimbabwe and uh, countries like in Venezuela, where the government wind up printing more money, making the numbers look larger, but in reality, you can really buy more with it. Real numbers, that means when something goes up, that means you have more purchasing power, meaning you can buy more with that money. But unfortunately, in this scenario, it doesn't happen. At the same time, I talked about how you should change your perception about money and that money is actually not wealth. Having money doesn't make you rich. You use money to generate productivity. Uh, you use money to uh, create time. Uh, and it's a vehicle that leads you to the creation of wealth. That's why the rich never store their money under the mattress or in their savings account. They actually use that money and in invest it, which is why I decided to create this episode because some of you have requested for uh, ways to diversify your portfolio outside of real estate. So there are multiple ways to diversify your portfolio. One is through the stock market. One is through pressure metal whether it's gold or silver and some people choose to diversify into luxury items so uh, in this episode in particular we're going to talk about uh, Rolex and we're going to talk about Louis Vuitton right because who doesn't know Louis Vuitton right for those who didn't catch this episode I'm going to leave uh, the link down below in the description box so you can check it out after you're done watching this episode um, and uh, if you want to find out more about 
uh, how the Fed works and the money printing. There's also another episode right here that I released a couple of months ago that you are more than welcome to check it out. And the link to the description will be down below uh, in the description box. OK, so now let's just get started and let's uh, talk about Rolex first. Right. So for this example, we're going to talk about four models in particular. Now, you have to be aware that just because you're uh, holding a Rolex, it doesn't mean that your Rolex is worth something. OK, so investing in luxury items is the same thing as investing in real estate. It is the same thing as investing in the stock market. You have to know what you're buying. OK, just like in real estate, not every house is a great investment. Not every stock is going to be a great investment. Same thing with the watches. So you have to do your due diligence, you have to do the market research, you have to educate yourself to verify how legit the watches are. So that way you're not being taken advantage of by somebody who just gave you a knockoff and, you know, wind up taking $5,000 of your pocket, right? Okay, so uh, for those who are looking to learn more about the world of watches, I actually found this website uh, called Chrono24. Uh, they're actually great. Uh, I am not affiliated with them whatsoever. Uh, I just happen to like their data, and in a minute I'm about to show you why. So uh, we're going to go over four Rolex models, okay? And based on my research, these are the four models that happened to retain their value, and um, if anything, they have actually appreciated in value over time. So the first one is the Rolex uh, Date Just. And um, then we have this one right here, which is the Rolex Submariner. I hope I'm not butchering the name. And then the other one is the Rolex GMT. And the other one is actually the Rolex, uh, uh, part of the uh, presidential collection. And this is one of the very few Rolexes that are made out of gold. So this one is actually an 18 karat gold watch. OK, so let's just start with the first one. Rolex, they just as of August 2021, this price, it's what will get you this watch. So 4,850 is what this watch is going to cost you, right? And we're talking about used watches right here. And if you scroll all the way down, you can actually appreciate the value of this watch, how it has been appreciating over time. So if you go down to February 2011, which is apparently when this watch was released, the price of this watch was 2,338. And, uh, you know, inflation happened and then money printing started happening. Yada, yada, boom, stimulus came and it shoot the price all the way up to 6,272. So that's the average price. Whatever price you saw up here, that's what the seller is asking for this price. Um, and I'm guessing it's because of the condition. So this is in a fair condition, uh, which means it has been worn and it has signs of a wear and tear. But um, if you pay attention to this, this is what I'm talking about, understanding the differences between nominal and real. So nominal, it just simply means uh, an augmentation, uh, an increase in um, numbers. So this watch was 2,338 and today is 6,272. That's the average. Ideally, if the value of your currency or if the value of your money was real, that means that with 6,272, you should be able to get at least uh, two of these watches or maybe even three, right? If you manage to negotiate with the dealer, but it's not the case. That means that you're dealing with money that has no value whatsoever. And that is just simply a pure nominal number because a nominal number doesn't allow you to buy more stuff. It only lets you buy the same stuff, the same quantity, and sometimes even less of it. So in this case, this uh, watch, uh, this Rolex right here has appreciated a nominal value over time. Uh, and if you are an investor who's looking to park your money somewhere, remember, you cannot park $200 under your mattress and expect those $200 to be worth the same thing 10 years down the road. That's why you invest it. You invested in real estate. You invested in the stock market. You invested in um, gold, precious metals, right? And some people choose to invest it in a Rolex because if whoever had this $2,000 back then, uh, let's say you have two people. One person decides to leave it under the mattress and the other one decided to go ahead and buy a Rolex. Now, many years down the road, 
2020, that person who left the money under the mattress will still have $2,000. However, this person that bought the Rolex now has something that is worth $6,272 and he or she can sell it for that price. And that's how you protect yourself against inflation, okay? And this is the beauty about learning about luxury items. Uh, the next item on the list is the Rolex Submariner. And once again, hopefully I'm not butchering the name. And uh, the asking price for this beautiful watch is $13,975. And uh, the condition has been unworn. So uh, that's pretty um, close to new. And if you scroll all the way down, you will see once again, the graph showing you the appreciation, the performance of this watch over time. So you have uh, the watch that was uh, released, uh, let's see, back in August 2012. So August 2012, this watch was $7,051. Fast forward a couple of years and now it's costing you $13,943. That's the average price for uh, this watch. Once again, if you invested that money back then, this is what you will be getting today. That will be the real value. And this is what you know, luxury brands understand. They understand that the more the government starts printing money, uh, the more money is injected into the economy. That means the value of that currency, in this case, the dollar, because we're in the state. So that means that the dollar is going to decrease in value. It's going to depreciate in value. That doesn't mean Rolex has to just sit there and watch things fall and, and, and just, you know, do nothing. So what they do is that they increase the prices of the products because by all means, they're not going to let their product, their quality, their brand depreciate over time. And that's what you as a smart investor, that's why you're watching this channel, uh, are trying to do because you want to learn more about how to protect your equity, how to protect your money, right? Now, moving along, we have another model right here, and that's the Rolex GMT. But before we further go down into uh, this video, if you're enjoying this episode, do not forget to hit the like button once again, and also share this episode with someone like you who is looking to learn information of this kind. Now, back to uh, the page. So the Rolex GMT, um, the asking price for this one is 12,400, and then it's in good condition. And as you scroll down, then you get a view into all the historical prices right here. So this watch started off, uh, let's see when, in June, 2009 and the price back then was 4357 fast forward to today august 2021 this watch is worth 13629 Phew, we're talking about a, a big jump right here so once again if your money was real that means you could have bought at least three of these watches with this money that you see here on the screen, right? With the $13,000. However, that is not true because it's just a nominal number. So the watch retained its value. The watch over time has been protecting you, uh, the smart investor against inflation, and it has been appreciating over time to adjust to the cost of living of today. Now, this one, it's quite interesting. Uh, it has a very high entry point at 47695 uh, and it's in very good condition. Once again, this is an 18 karat gold Rolex. Okay. And then as you scroll down, you will see right here that the entry point for this watch back uh, in 2012, I believe this is when it was released, uh, it was 26,709. So the graph here shows that the appreciation has been uh, more or less stable in comparison to all these other ones that were on an upward trend. This one too, but it's 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 more kind of like linear. And then right here when the stimulus came out, psh, the price skyrocketed all the way up to 47464 So um, if you come to think about it, this is actually a lot less volatile than a Bitcoin. It is definitely a lot less volatile than the stock market. So definitely a great way to diversify. Now let's move on to Louis Vuitton. Okay. Now, one thing about Louis Vuitton is that I try so hard to find the historical prices, just like I did with the Rolexes. But uh, unfortunately, uh, th there wasn't enough data out there. I couldn't find anything. So the best thing that I can come up with was to compare prices from last year to the prices of this year. Now, I do invest in a Louis Vuitton myself because, hey, I'm a girl and I love my Louis Vuitton bags. And so what I decided to do was to pick uh, three samples, uh, three models between classic and uh, models that are really popular just to give you an overview 
of um, the price changes and how Louis Vuitton has also been adjusting its prices to uh, fight against inflation and to also retain the value of their brand, right? So here I have one of the most popular uh, models of uh, their bag, and that's the Speedy 30 bandolier and the speedy was uh 1640 and i bought it on uh, july 30th 2020 and if you come to uh the louis vuitton website and you type in speedy 30b um, that's the model you will find out that now this bag costs $1,680. So we're talking about a $40 increase. Um, it might not seem like it's a lot, but if you count all the bags that exist worldwide, it gives you a sense of, um, you know, how much they're actually generating just by that tiny quote unquote, small increment of $40. So this is one of those models that will never go out of style is always in high demand. And as you can see here on the website is actually out of stock. And uh, that's in essence how you get to see, all right, which model will retain its value, which model is high in demand. Because once again, just like with the roll assist, not every single Louis Vuitton bag, it's going to retain its value. Uh, usually anything that has the monogram right here is what's going to retain its value over time. They are trying to move on to items that are made out of leather. I think they finally hit it off with that, uh, but I'm not quite sure yet. I guess we're going to have to give it a couple of more months to see if um, the prices are going to continue to increase or if those bags retain this, their value. Uh, and if so, and if you guys are interested, uh, let me know and I can create another episode talking about that. So uh, moving along with Louis Vuitton, another style and another bag that is actually quite uh, popular and that has also increased in value in less than one year is the multi pochette accessoire and i bought this back in november 7th 2020 at a price of 1860 and if you come over here and you type in multi pochette you will see that this was actually the original model and then after they hit it up with this they started creating um, more backs right and what i've noticed is that um these back and this these are one of the very few styles that Louis Vuitton um, managed to hit it off with uh, leather and that has not only maintained its value, but it's it's also appreciated over time. But um, for the purpose of this episode, let's just focus on this one right here. So this is uh, the one that I uh, purchased last year. And look at the price right now. August 2021, um, the price is 2050 Okay. Last year, 1860 This year... 2050. And I am pretty sure that uh, Louis Vuitton is going to have another price increase on this style right here before uh, 2021 ends. Okay. Now, Moving along to the last model, and this is the Neverfold GM. For those who are aware of Louis Vuitton collections, uh, you pretty much know which back I'm talking about. This is, once again, a classic. Everybody has it. Uh, it's very functional. Uh, it's always going to be in high demand. And this back was uh, 1580 and I bought it exactly a year ago. So August 2020. And if you come to the Louis Vuitton website, uh, we type in Neverfold GM. What you will find is that this back has also appreciated. So I actually ended up buying this collection and not this one, uh, mainly because I didn't want to deal with the handles getting messed up. And uh, so when you expand this, you will see that this price is 1620 Well, last year it was 1580 And again, that's how Louis Vuitton adjusts its prices. Same thing with Rolex, same thing with all the existing luxury brands out there. And once again, just to reiterate, not every single Louis Vuitton back is a great investment. Not every single Rolex out there is a good investment. You have to do your proper diligence. You have to do your market research. You have to understand what is it that it's in demand? What is it that people want? Uh, and which bags are going to retain its value or which watch is going to retain its value? Now, if you want to learn more about this and you're actually interested in me creating more episodes of this kind uh, to help you invest in more luxury items, please let me know in the comment section down below. So that way I can take the hint from you and also uh, know that you're in fact interested and that will give me a, a pointer for me to create more episodes of this kind to help you diversify your investment 
investing portfolio. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully you found the content very valuable. And if you did, friendly reminder to share the episode with someone who you know it's going to benefit from that type of information. And while I still have you here, do not forget to check this episode right here. That's going to help you complement everything you just learned today. And until then, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.